you can't come in here. Let's take a look at access modifiers. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at access modifiers. So first of all, the last tutorial is actually, well, I wouldn't say necessarily a prerequisite, but it does definitely does help because we're actually going to be using the code that we've made in the last tutorial. So if you have not seen this, I highly recommend it. Otherwise, we're going to jump right into the dog class once again. And the idea here is that, well, we have added some fields to our dog. And previously, we have seen that we can actually change the age of a dog, you know, outside of the class. Basically, we can say, hey, Benji's age is now 10, even though he's actually only 7. That's kind of weird. So we can restrict the access to this variable, to this field, by changing the access modifier. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to be talking about a few access modifiers. So there's basically public, there's protected, and there is private. And then there's also something else, which isn't really an access modifier, which is called static. That's the static keyword. We're also going to be looking at this. And then this basically solves the entire issue of what this is. So that's actually pretty cool. So we'll finally understand what the main method is. But for the time being, let's think about it. Well, actually, you know, let's just make this private. So what does that mean? First of all, we're immediately going to get, hey, there are some issues here because if we take a look at this, we can't access this outside of the class. This includes, by the way, we can't actually access this for reading it out. Meaning that when a field is private or a method is private, so we can make either of them private, then we can only use this inside of the class itself. So you can see that this.age here, right, that works fine. That's totally okay. If I were to make a new public void, let's say something like birthday, right, a new method here, where I just say this age plus plus, also totally fine, because we're inside of this class. However, I cannot access this outside of the class. Interesting. There is also the protected keyword, which is, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say like used less often or something like that. You can see, first of all, we can still use the name outside here. Why is that the case? Well, the protected keyword works for every class that inherits from this class. So if we were to have another class that inherits from dog, then we could use the name keyword. And it can also be used in the same package. So we've not really talked about packages, but there's also not really that like many th interesting things to say here. Uh, it's basically, we have a net package and a Calendra package. And I could, for example, make a new package in here Packages are basically, you can think of them as a folder structure for your classes. So you can separate those neatly. Uh, idea being that usually when you separate everything out very neatly, you can also separate them out into different libraries later down the line. And that's sort of the idea. Uh, the actual structure for packages is definitely something you can, of course, think of yourself as well. We're not going to go too much into detail with this for the time being. However, that's sort of the idea. So that's the idea of protected and the idea of private. Now, of course, we're still having the issue. Well, what are we supposed to do about this age now? Well, there's a very interesting thing that we can do for the private uh, fields. And that is once again, right click, generate, and then we can generate a getter and a setter. So we're just going to do both of them for the age variable here, for the age field. We're just going to say, okay, we're going to have a public uh, method that returns an integer, of course, returning the age variable here. And then we also have a public method called set age, where we pass in an integer into the as a parameter, and then setting the age to that. So this is a getter and a setter. Those are also sort of, you know, terms that are used in programming. Uh, usually people know what that means. Hey, I need a setter or a getter for that variable. This is usually what they're referring to. Now, maybe we actually don't want a setter, makes sense, because we've just said, hey, you know, I actually don't want, uh, you know, outside class to be able to change this. That's totally fine. But we now have get age, meaning that what we can do is instead of calling age, like uh, directly, we can say get age. Then same here. And then this we're just going to get rid of. So now the get age here will return exactly the same thing. As you can see, seven, five, absolutely totally fine. So this would be an example of a getter. Let's just call this as well, getter. And like we've seen, the setter is then pretty much just set age and then passing in the well the thing that we want to set. We could now 
call the birthday to change the age. That would actually work as well. So that's actually pretty cool. But now there's something else that's kind of interesting, and that's the static keyword. This is not really an access modifier, but I wanted to show you this anyway, because that's also static and final. So this is another one that's pretty interesting. So first of all, um, actually, let's take a look at final first. So private, let's say final int h. All of a sudden, we're going to have an issue here. Why? Well, because when you have something that's final, you assign it a value once, and then it never can change again. Okay, that's actually very interesting. So this is sort of a constant when you can think about it. And the reason why it's complaining right now, you can see variable age might not have been initialized at constructor parameter. What does that mean? Well, the default constructor here does not assign a value to age. Therefore, it doesn't work. Because if you were to create a dog with the default constructor here, then the age variable isn't assigned. And then it, it just doesn't work that way. Now, I could just delete the default constructor because what's very interesting is that when I have a constructor defined, then the default constructor basically isn't valid anymore, except if I actually define it. So in this case, the default constructor here is defined, so all is well. If I delete it, then that's totally fine. Then the error up here disappears. The error down here appears because it says cannot assign a value, a value to a final variable age, meaning that when age is final, I cannot change it once it has been assigned once. So that is, of course, not quite what we want for age in this case. That's actually not quite right. However, let's add a different variable here. And that hopefully sort of explains the static keyword as well. So for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to say public static int. And this is the dog to human year multiplier. And this is equal to seven, if I'm not mistaken. And the idea here is that the integer that is static here is actually called on the class and not the object. What does that mean? Well, if I were to type in Benji dot dog to, as you can see, it doesn't exist. Dog to human multiplier doesn't exist. I have to say dog dot dog to human multiplier, uh, year multiplier. So I actually have to call this on the class, meaning that when I have something that's static, I do not need an object to access this. And this is also the same variable for every dog, which of course makes sense because whether or not you have a Chihuahua or a, or maybe whether or not you have Benji or Gracie or whatever dog, the multiplier here pretty much stays the same. Yes, there's some issues with that. Maybe with the size of the dog, let's not worry about this for the time being. But in general, this pretty much stays the same. Therefore, we can make this static because, you know, it, it's, it's fine. And now we can even go a step further and can say, wait, well, wait a second. This is also final because it doesn't matter. And it, this will never change. Therefore, this is always going to be seven. And even if it changes, we can always change it up here. But we don't want this to be changed anywhere else. So we can't say now we can say dog multiplier. And we can't say anything like 10 here because then it's going to be like, hey, this is a final value. I could change it if it's not final. Right. So if I take a look at this right here, you can see now I could change it like this. This would now mean that it changes for, well, every dog. What's also important is that inside of the class itself, I can access this. Uh, so let's say, for example, what I could do is I can make a public int that is the get age in human years. Right. Once again, you can see that this is a non-static method, meaning that this is called on an object. So I have to call this, for example, on Benji. This means that I return this dot age times dog dot uh, dog to human year multiplier. I can also leave out the dog because we're in the dog class itself. Uh, that's something you can do for clarity purposes. I'm actually going to leave this here just in case, but you could in theory leave this out. And the cool thing about this is that now what I can do is, you know, this doesn't work anymore, but what I can do is I can say something like system out print line and I can say ng dot get years get age in human years like this and this will then just um it just will work and let's see 49 that is seven times seven that's absolutely right so that's actually really cool and like i said we can of course also make our methods static so i could have something like a public static public static void and let's just say output dog and we're going to pass in a dog variable in here. So that's very interesting. We've not seen that before. But of course, once again, 
dog is a normal data type that we can just use. So we can also just pass this in as a variable into here. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take this, these two lines here, system out, and we're going to say dog.name. And then we're also going to say dog.h. So we're going to just print out the name of the dog and the age. So that's pretty much all that output dog does. Once again, this is a static method, meaning that we actually can't call this on Gracie in this case. So Gracie dot output dog, as you can see, doesn't work. But what we can do is we can say dog dot output dog and then pass in Gracie. So this is just one example of this for, you know, as this example, a static definitely can be a little confusing. That's not to worry about this. Um, we're going to probably see a few more examples of this as well. But overall, those are sort of the access modifiers that we can have, public, pro uh, protected, and private. And then there's also the static and the final keyword in here as well. So that's sort of an, hopefully, an illustrative example, especially with the, you know, year modifier or the multiplier. I hope that that sort of makes sense. But that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.